Hi everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, joining today. It's been great to see everyone in person. So, um, yeah. So today uh, we are going to discuss about you know like the effective ways to contribute to Drupal. Like, I know many of you might be a regular contributor or you know a seasoned contributor to Drupal. However, uh, you know like contributing to open source is great. However, when it is done in an effective manner, it kind of has you know. The chair in the top. So make sure that you know while doing contribution, you should ensure that it is kind of effective, it doesn't cause any spam thing or you know unnecessary burden on the committers. So we'll see all about you know all the details, uh, like how best we can do the contribution, how effective it is. So yeah, so we get started. Uh, I'm Mohit and I'm a local developer in uh, previous next. Uh, you can find me on Drupal Movie Tennis Coragera, Movie Tennis on Twitter, or links, whatever. Uh, so today uh, we'll see like what kind of contribution uh, that we make uh, as a kind of community member, like what can be code contribution, non-code contribution, any type of contributions, right? Uh, apart from that, like we'll discuss like how we can you know effectively do all those contributions like, without you know adding unnecessary burden on the uh, community members to manage. So uh, this is uh, one thing. Yeah. So just a kind of quick question, like how many of you are kind of regular contributor to the project? Anything is fine. Board, non code event. If you are volunteering for event, yeah, that's also a contribution. So two. Huh? Okay. So uh, we'll see, like you know, how you can get involved with the Drupal community, like how best you can give uh, you know, support to people. So. This is all this marketing things. Uh, yeah. So now, uh, yeah. So can anyone tell me why I should contribute to open source? Like in anything you can think of, like not in just Drupal, but any open source software. Like anything that comes in mind, anyone? Maybe you know, it can be code or uh, event or some sort of other support. Anything. Useful like. to other people. Useful to other people. Yeah, we can help other people. We can mentor new people. Is correct. Anything? Anyone else? It's a community yeah, it's a community. Yeah, it's community. It's always good to uh, give something back to the community. Give something back to the community. Yeah. This is the first way to contribute back to the community. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So let's see in detail like uh, the way. So first one is like uh, you know repetition or recognition. Like for example, if you work in the community, right? People know so you can build your brand like, by contributing to open source. Like, you know, when you work on uh, any open source software, or let's say Drupal, right? People recognize you with, with the with your username. They kind of you know it helps us to boost your career significantly. And uh, there is no harm in doing contribution just to get recognition, right? You know, it's it's the obvious thing. You know. Uh, next one is like giving back to community, right? Uh, so many of you might be aware, right? The motto of Drupal is like come for what, stay for the community, right? So it's the kind of essence of the community that okay, like someone might be motivated, okay, I want to give back to community, and hence I'm like I'm contributing to it. Next one is like uh, personal growth or development. So the thing is that like for example. If you are involved in any, you know, any Drupal community, you get to work with like code or I mean, you can do some sort of non-code contributions or any sort of thing, right? Uh, ultimately, what happens is like you kind of get to know the inner parts of the software. Like for example, if you are working in Drupal, right, you get to get like more familiarity around code or how things work, you know, so the API components of Drupal. So these all things that you know helps us to gain more skill around. Uh, Another thing can be like you know solving problems. So let's say you are kind of highly motivated to solve problems. Like in Drupal, you might have that like we have lots of issues in the HTTP, almost 7,000, 8,000 issues. Many of them might be normal, a few are critical, or all sort of things. So mostly like you might be tempted to you know solve the issues that affect like wide, wide range of people, right? So that can be the reason like why someone you know contributes for it. Uh, another one can be you know you get to interact with a global audience. Like when you are working on any open source software, right? You get to interact with people from all around the world. 
uh, get the feedback, you will see the feedback. So this is the kind of process which you, which kind of helps you in your day to day development work as well. So that can be the you know uh, motivation for contribution. So we'll see next. Uh, typically in Drupal community, uh, what kind of contribution one can do? Like uh, many of like many of you might mention, right? Like they can do the uh, mentoring, they can do board contribution, right? So primarily, like being a software, we can always do board contributions. Uh, apart from that, uh, like many of you might be aware, like documentation in Drupal is something which needs more love, right? So you can contribute to you know documentation. We'll see that we will see that in detail. Uh, but you can do that. Uh, another one is like user support, which is again uh, you know very few set of people are doing that. You can support people on Drupal sites, you know, Drupal.org, forums or anywhere. Uh, another one is like, you know, event or community organizing, which is like happening right now. We have like volunteers who are kind of giving back to community, like, you know, organizing event, uh, being part of like event community. So that's also a kind of valid contribution. Uh, if you are the kind of, you know, more interested in QA, so you can test out all sort of issues and other details. So that is also kind of, you know, very contribution. Uh, after that, uh, if you are kind of, you know, the guy who is into marketing uh, in Drupal, we have initiative for those as well, that you can contribute from marketing perspective as well. So we'll see that this, all these things in detail. Yeah. So maybe I'll start with code because uh, in Drupal, like, the majority of contribution that we receive, like the, the majority of engagement is like from board perspective. So we'll see like, you know, the ways how we can contribute, like how we can make it more effective and how, more important, how to stay engaged into that. Like, usually what happens like when someone starts doing it, it gets kind of stopped for whatsoever reason. So we'll kind of, you know, we'll see a ways that we can stay engaged to the contributions. So, First thing is like uh, just figure out like what motivates you in the code. Like for example in Drupal, uh, you might be like okay, uh, what would you like excite me the most? So what you can do is like you can go to the issue queue, figure out the issues related to node module, and see like if you know if you can fix anything, if you can work on anything, and that will kind of you know give you brief insight about node uh, node module, and kind of that will keep you engaged. Like okay. Uh, my set is limited, the issue set is limited, so I can explore that. Uh, next one is kind of, you know, uh, working with certain initiatives. Like, uh, in Drupal, we have like lots of initiatives. Like, you might be aware with that, like community initiatives, or strategic initiatives, or all sorts of uh, Drupal's development methods. So you can be a part of that and you can contribute to that as well. Uh, another thing is like, uh, to keep motivated, like focus on learning rather than getting credits. So I have seen like lots of people, you know, who kind of who contribute just to get the credit, which is fine as well. I mean, it's not a kind of bad thing to have. But the problem is that like usually in Drupal, the issue life cycle is in like a few months to years. So whenever there is an issue, sometimes it's take like you know uh, even five years to fix or it gets fixed in a couple of years. So the thing is that like. When credit is the only motivation, uh, one will get like demoralized easily because uh, like the progress doesn't happen overnight, right? <laughs> so when like the focus is learning, you'll get like engaged to it. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, so again, I mean, credit is the kind of byproduct of contribution. So always, I mean, we should ensure that focus is uh, basically on the learning. Uh, another one is like. Uh, you might be like aware in Drupal, like we have like lots of subsystems, like let's say Form API or Ajax API or Gash API, right? So you can contribute to that particular subsystem as well. So we'll see like what are the benefits of it. So the thing is that whenever you are working with like say subsystem or particular module, the thing is that you are less likely to do the you know low hanging contributions like read me fixes or uh, you know, PHP CS fixes and all sorts of details. So another thing is like we get to learn more. Like when you, whenever you are working on a certain aspect of code, 
uh, you'll have to explore that, you'll have to kind of understand how it works, like how it collaborates with other parts of the world. So, another thing is like, you know, you get to learn more. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, you know, the benefits that you will have. Uh, next thing is like, uh, low maybe contribution, that's, um, yeah, I have been kind of thinking to highlight. So, the thing is that on multiple issues, I have seen that, you know, people kind of tend to create empty forms or they kind of tend to upload a, you know, fake page or any other thing. So, I should say that. So, uh, yeah, for uh, those who don't like, uh, so what we are going to, we are discussing is about, you know, how we can do the meaningful contributions to local core, like what are the effective ways that can, you know, keep us engaged in the process. So, uh, mainly we were kind of, you know, figuring out like what motivates us actually, you know, how we can keep engaged to the process. So that's thing. Uh, another is like, uh, things to take care of is like avoid low hanging contributions. So by low hanging what I mean is like uh, try to try not to do like readme.md, readme.tx issues, php CS issues. The thing is that uh, no one benefits like by those issues. Like right? so the obviously it is great like the code have like you know it doesn't have any PHP CS issues but the thing is that your time is like quite important than just doing all those, you know, low hanging issues. So make sure that, you know, you prioritize your time rather than doing all sort of, you know, low level contribution. Uh, another thing is like, uh, I have seen on many issues like people tend to do the pre roll. I mean, making re roll is fine, like when you are learning the contribution process. But the, what problem actually happens is like, let's see one scenario. We have a page for like 9.5.x. Now we are on like 10.1.x triple cycle, right? Now, so the thing is that the issue that the page that was for 9.5.x, it might have been fixed by other way or it might have changed significantly. So what will happen like when you do the read all, uh, the page might not be relevant at all. So that's kind of like, I mean, when you rise the page, uh, it will kind of fail or it will kind of introduce a reg regression. So make sure that when you do it, um, do it wisely. Like, read it, read the thoroughly and make sure, you know, you do it right actually. Uh, another thing was like I mentioned earlier, uh, put more focus on learning rather than, you know, credits. Obviously credits are a good thing, but it should not be the sole motivation for, you know, uh, doing contributions actually. And uh, strictly, uh, I would kind of request for to do like, not to do all sort of issues like PHP, CS issues or you know, uh, info YAML changes to update both version requirements and all sorts of details. So, again, okay, you can get the quick credit, you know, you can get a like performing hit, but it's not good for you. Like, you you will get like, okay, tens of credits in a, in a week or so, but um, it will hamper your reputation as well as your uh, organization's reputation as well. So, don't do that. Like, even if your manager changes, just try to explain them. Like, Okay, this is not the right way to do it. Like if you do it like minimal, uh, which is fine. Like less contributions are fine than you know doing all sort of spammy thing. Because like no one benefits from it, not even you, your organization, or not even community. So it just like creates burden on uh, committers and maintainers. So yeah, let's not do this actually. Uh, couple of things uh, when you know, when we try to reroll any issues, like uh, obviously. Like let's say I'm re-rolling one issue, okay? Uh, the thing is that uh, we should only do it like whenever it is required. Suppose if the page is quite older, even though if it is older, if it is getting applicable to latest technologies, I mean that is fine. You don't need to kind of re-upload the page or re-roll it again, right? It, it doesn't make sense actually. Uh, another case is like I mentioned earlier, right? It might cause regression. So be wise, like when you do the re-roll, so that you know you don't kind of end up like any additional regression. Uh, next one is uh, like let's say I have seen like many people where uh, you know uh, the patch was working fine, people does the reroll and it starts failing. So what 
what the reason is like. Uh, there might be underlying code which has been changed. Uh, there might be some change in you know how it interacts with Drupal Score API. So make sure that you run the test case when you reroll the page. Like you can run the test case on local. Uh, just make sure that your reroll is correct and uh, it doesn't cause any regression. Uh, so that's one thing to you know validate when you do the reroll. Uh, next one is uh, running uh, you know uh, commit code check script. So usually what happens like Drupal CI job will already run all those scripts. But before that, like if you run it on local, it makes sense. Otherwise, like we'll have to fix it and upload another page. So make sure that you run that script uh, on local, you know, before uploading the page or pushing it to PR or like you know doing whatever contribution. You can pack that in, you know, uh, Drupal core scripts folder. And so that's the thing, like you know, you should be mindful when you reroll the issue. The benefit is that uh, the number of comments on the issue will be manageable. Besides, it will help uh, committers or reviewers so that you know you kind of whenever the page is meaningful, it is easy to review actually. So yeah, be mindful about that. Uh, another thing. Uh, like you can, like let's say you don't want to code it, right? Like you can review the issue as well. So in Drupal.org, we have a kind of very detailed guideline how you can review the issues actually. So many times I have seen like people what usually does is like let's say if page is green, like it is passing all the test cases, they just paste the issue, upload the screenshot, which is fine, and make it RTBC. But let's not make RTBC because. Uh, for any issue, it needs to pass through multiple checks actually. For example, uh, first thing is like we need to get it code reviewed from community, right? So any community member they can come, they can do the code review, like the code is up to the mark or not. Post that what we need to do is like let's say if we are changing some configuration or some other thing, uh, we need update hook. So that like whenever uh, someone updates the Drupal version, particular configuration should be updated. So those kind of things is something which needs to be reviewed when you when you do that you know, code review. So make sure that uh, like if you are testing that is fine, you can test it, you can upload the page and say that it is working fine. But let's not mark it as RTBC because uh, it, issue needs to pass all sort of gates before you know it is like ready for RTBC. So uh, next one is like uh, when you do the review, uh, you know review like all the communication on the issue basically. So I'll give you one example. Like let's say we have an issue, uh, it has been like there has been one solution approach in like coming five or whatever. After some time someone comes comes up with like another solution and say that okay this looks like more promising and more optimistic. Uh, we can go ahead with solution. So when you are reviewing it you have to be mindful like okay uh, there has been a couple of solutions discussed on the issue too and like, you can validate those, you can summarize those, okay, like which one is best or even if you don't know it best, what you can summarize it like, okay, I have tested this like second issue, this looks good, or you can validate the approach, it's up to you, but just like consider all the thread, I mean, don't just like blindly pick the last page or, you know, do like, do the review and just update the comment, right, I mean, it doesn't help anyone actually. Uh, another thing is like, when you do the review, make sure that you know try to summarize everything correctly. Like whether it's a you know, you review the page or a, you know PR or anything, try to ensure that it covers like you know all the guidelines that that will help the next person who is coming. Like let's say if it didn't work for you, right? So try to summarize the step that you took so that like next person who is coming to work on it, they can just figure out okay. Uh, then fellow tried that thing and it didn't work. So I can probably do another thing so I can tweak it certain way so that it passes, right? So always like be mindful when you do the review and uh, don't end up like, you know, doing like false RTBC or any other uh, uh, state or something, right? Uh, so next one is like, you know, I'm going to highlight kind of initiative driven contribution. So like we discussed earlier, right? Um, uh, so the thing is that uh, we can join like multiple initiatives. So in Drupal core development cycle, you might be aware that you know we have like a strategic initiative or community initiatives. Like uh, it can be you know strategic initiative like automatic updates or recipe initiatives. Uh, 
for community initiative, it might be like you know, bug smash or CMI 2.0. So you can be a part of this initiative and contribute to Drupal. Now, what to keep in mind uh, while working on those initiative contribution is that like they usually have a weekly meeting, right? So you can be a part of this meeting. You can interact with all the members of the you know community. Give meaningful input. Uh, it doesn't make sense like you come to the meeting today, say hi, go home and then come again after 15 days and say hi. I mean, uh, that's not a kind of valid contribution. And it doesn't make sense as well, right? So do kind of you know uh, engage in the community, work on the right set of issues, ask the right set of questions, and fix the issue. That is the kind of you know uh, meaningful contribution I would say. Apart from that. Uh, you can kind of you know take accountability of certain things like for example there are lots of logistical tasks in you know uh, any initiative like summarize if you not or uh, you know or be a part of you know regular initiative staff holding or uh, all sort of like managerial things so you can do that as well uh, if you are not you know a bit broader but uh, i would say don't just kind of come say hi and go away right just be a part of something like you know just do some code, even if you pick like small set of issues, that is fine. But just do something meaningful. Right? So, what are the benefits uh, of initiative driven contribution? Like, you don't need to hunt for issues. Like, let's say we have a initiative for like let's say automatic uh, automated update initiatives, right? So there are like already pre-built set of uh, issues that you can figure out. You can work on that. Uh, besides, like you get like more familiar with like, Drupal core, like how things work like uh, since it is a kind of initiative everything will be fresh uh, like the code and all sort of things so you can you know you can be more creative like you can write effective code apart from that uh, the, the main benefit is that you can get attention from the community when you are doing meaningful contributions uh, people recognizes you from your name actually and it can kind of you know boost your target significantly so always like be wise when you contribute to you know uh, initiatives because yeah it can shape your career significantly uh, another thing is like uh, it's somewhat kind of neglected like whenever you work on an issue uh, whenever someone fixes an issue uh, in drupal uh, we kind of write the test case to ensure that you know the issue is kind of fixed right so make sure like you can write test cases as well let's say you don't have much time okay and you want to kind of contributed you can write there are almost 7000 issues that that are dealt with needs tests so you can go that you can write functional tests you can write kernel tests uh, like for js we have like functional javascript tests so you can write all sort of tests uh, for you know for contribution purposes so again i mean uh, needs some more time in learning curve but this can be a you know uh, beneficial to everyone actually uh, Next one is like how, like being a you know QA engineer, how you can involve the community. So obviously, like when someone fixes the issue, it's kind of it's good to test it, right? Like how it how it saves, it, like how it ends up. It. So uh, being a kind of QA engineer, you can validate all sort of issues, like you can test it. Besides, uh, we have like dedicated accessibility channel where you know if you are interested more into accessibility. You can join that channel. You can be a part of, you know, uh, group discussion. You can give your input. So they usually discuss about like certain UI change, like how it will impact on accessibility and all sort of details. So you can, you know, you can join that and you can give your, you know, inputs. Um, like uh, one thing, like don't ask this thing that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so in case if you test it, don't ask it to write uh, RTBC right away, because uh, it might mean. Code review or some other other checks, like for example, it might need some different sort of implementation approach altogether, right? So make sure that you know you do it well actually. Uh, documentation, uh, let's say you are more into writing, right? Like uh, you are kind of your guy in go to contribute, right? So in Drupal, like you can be a responsible for certain documentation guidelines. You can you know. You can you can take ownership of certain documentation and take care of it. Like you can write a documentation for any modules as well. Like so, that is also one thing where you you know you can contribute and you can join the Slack channel on Drupal Slack documentation. 
uh, and we have like recent activity happening over there. Uh, another one is like event contributions where <coughs> you can work as a event planner or event organizer, or, like help us to organize uh, events like this Drupal Camp Pune. Uh, also, we have like uh, in many cities like Bangalore or Pune or Delhi, we have like regular Drupal meetups. So you can organize those meetups as well. I mean, that's also a uh, type of contribution. And you can, you know, register a project in Drupal and get credit for that. I mean, it's not a kind of, you know, you don't need to invest too much time over there. So that's one thing. And uh, another thing is like uh, uh, on Drupal Con or other Drupal events, they usually seek for volunteer to be a, you know, a session selection committee or uh, other, you know, other sort of volunteers. So you can be a part of those committee and uh, yeah, you can contribute to that. So that's uh, a bit about like event contributions. Now, uh, like for marketing one, uh, we have a kind of initiative called Promote Drupal. It is a community initiative where you know you can work on like you can you can build a design for Drupal Swag. We have our Drupal Swag website as well. Where, you know you can design or contribute to you know t-shirts design or all sort of swag designs. Uh, apart from that, uh, I think Promote Drupal initiative we are working on uh, building a generic uh, sales pitch deck. So you can build a pitch deck and you, know, you can contribute to that as well. That's also a good sense or good way to contribute actually. Uh, so that's about marketing. Uh, quick recap, we'll see. Uh, so again, do's and don'ts. So like we discussed earlier, use your time wisely. Uh, always do the focus contribution, like don't roam around if you pick up anything and start uploading page, right? I mean, you can do that, but your time is more important than that. So always, you know, work on the find limited set of issues based on your skill and figure out like, okay, I want to do something meaningful, get into that. Uh, get into the regular habit, uh, you know, something like, okay, uh, I want to do a page a week or a couple of pages a week. I try to follow that so that you, know, you can get, can like maintain the momentum. Uh, otherwise, what will happen once it gets stopped? It takes time to like get it started again. Uh, the don'ts are strictly uh, please like don't do any spam contribution or PHP CS things. Uh, avoid unnecessary reroll. Uh, like strictly avoid all sort of info YAML changes because it might get you credit, but you don't learn anything out of it. It's not a big deal, so please don't do that. Uh, all sort of points are there. Uh, I mean, all sort of such horror stories are there in you know contribution recognition feedback channel on Drupal Slack. So if you want to do that, like just go there and see like how people react to that. Right? So please, uh, and, and if you don't do anything, which is fine, but at least don't do all those things, right? And don't even write like or summarize comments using chat GPT. Uh, there has been a multiple cases, but please don't do that. It doesn't benefit anyone actually. Increase the like noise in the overall uh, issues communication. So don't do that. Uh, don't kind of you know repost earlier pages or uh, I have seen like many issues like people complaints like they just apply the page and post the screenshot of like okay hey, this page is page is getting applied. Right? So you you don't need to do that right. Drupal uh, CI board will take care of it. Like if it is not getting applied, it will throw away there like hey it is not getting applied. So. You don't need to do all sort of redundant job. Try to be smart. Do like what you know. What do the smart use of your time? And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, any question? I would love to answer. Yeah. Any questions? Like anything? How to do it? What to do? What not to do? I mean, anything is anything new. Yeah. I want to ask about documentation. So, are you actually doing documentation? Uh, yeah. Style that you know, uh, yeah, you can. Like, for example, uh, you are using a module extensively, right? And you want to kind of come up with like how to use guide for that particular module, right? So you can write a guide. Uh, like, if you go to like Rosalind uh, Tavares mod slash head slash page, there is a I think a category for documentation. There is a content type for that, and you can like spin up the page and uh, talk to maintainer of that module, and they will link it. Like, it will be accessible from the module page itself. So you can do that as well. So basically, we're talking about uh, documentation related to modules. Yeah. Uh, and uh, is there are there guidelines at this point? I have. I can give you a couple of links actually. There are one. Uh, I'll, I'll get you the link actually. Uh, 
there is a dedicated uh, page for like how to do the contributions uh, related to documentation. So yeah, I'll, I'll put the link over here. And I saw one page related to documentation, but I wasn't sure how we can watch. I saw. Uh, so yeah, so uh, in terms of like uh, uh, writing up documentation mm -hmm. or. Uh, so you mean like for Drupal code or? I saw that for Drupal code, so maybe it's not accessible. No, it is accessible actually. So you can like for example, uh, in terms of code, let's like say uh, you want to write something for how to use media module, right? Uh, something like that. Or so you can actually contribute the page. Uh, I don't have the link handy right now, but uh, so there is a dedicated section for uh, Drupal course. Uh, Documentation actually, like there is a documentation for each module, like uh, how to use. I'll, I'll give you the link so you can probably, you know, like tweak it if needed or uh, uh, spin up a new page if you feel like something else is required. You can spin up a new page and uh, talk to the people. Like if you drop a message on documentation channel, uh, people will kind of help you out with the process and all. So, any beginner can actually, yeah, any, anyone, can, yeah, everyone are welcome. So, yeah, as long as like, you do the right way. People are kind of willing to help out. Anyone? Else? Yeah. I don't have a question for you, but I have a question for you. Know, has anyone contributed to Drupal at all so far? Uh, yeah, lots of actually. How many of you not contributed so far at all? Yeah. <laughs> not contributed at all. Don't shy. Yeah. Because we have someone very senior like me, <laughs> and we gave his Twitter and Slack link. You and can reach out to me on Drupal. We probably place that in a week's time. Or of these and we are going to make up first one. Can we do that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You can reach out to me on Drupal Slack or Twitter uh, anytime. It's fine. And feel free to ping me if you need any help. Like how to do, what to do, what not to do, anything is fine. Or even you can ask for like contribute channel as well. On Drupal Slack, uh, we have a dedicated channel for contributing. So you can, like, let's say if you want to ask someone, right? Uh, like someone did a page or something, and if you have some doubts, you can drop a message to that person on the channel itself. But, yeah. So, but don't DM them actually. <laughs> they are slightly conservative. So, ask on channel. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many? And How many of you don't know what Drupal Slack is? Okay. Or we can come tomorrow. We can explore something like we have a. Yeah, contribution day tomorrow. So, yeah, I've seen a lot of people who don't even know about a Slack channel, a Slack group mm -hmm. for There are two groups one for India Association, one for Google. Yeah. You can even be uh, connecting. So if you are shy and you are not ready to uh, talk to uh, others directly, you can connect with Google India Slack group. We invited Pune. Uh, so, Pune. Group channel is also on Drupal India Slack, so you can join there. You can ask anyone. Basically, people are like ready to help you. Uh, it's it's up to us to you know show enthusiasm. So anyone else? Yeah, just one point wanted to add. One of the benefits, uh, I think, learning and all those things. But as an interviewer, I usually check Drupal.org profile first. Step. So that's also a way. To Showing that you know and you are involved in the community. Have your profile, have your bio, details updated there. You visited this Drupal camp, put it in there. Makes sense. Cool. Anyone else? Anything, you can ask me anything else. Even if it is not related to session or contribution, and that's fine. I mean, you can reach out to me. Many times we do patches, right? But uh, the batches are very fair in Google Tesla, right? And someone else is coming and solve that issue and you know, passing the test. Uh, so mainly like, like right now we are doing some origin again uh, uh PR or something, but previously with the batches things, right? Sure. Yeah. So still some people uh, follow that approach actually uh, doing the batches and uh, yeah, many, many of like the front end issue, uh, pricing of the deep blue issue, or CSS linking issue, and those patches are getting priced. And if you see like uh, uh, the patches is raised against uh, any particular uh, branch or core branch, so that is also important. Uh, yeah, so uh, mainly uh, what you usually do is like uh, 
uh, when you try to upload the page, uh, find the latest active development branch, right? So nowadays it's I think uh, 10 to 20 text branch, uh, all the latest development is happening there. So always kind of when you try to upload the page, when you write the page, use that particular branch. Uh, that's first thing, do the page. Uh, after that what you usually do is like you run the linting fixes, like if you're doing a CSS. Yeah. So you can run like, uh, can we put like I said, I think uh, front -end, for front end we have a pretty year as well, right? Uh, I'm not sure about actual. But actually what happened now is PTR is not used to solve all the front end issues. issue. In our local family, we should be used to the young gang linking we should be used to resolve on that way. Okay. And then and then we upload the plans for the front end. So you are saying that like once we upload the plans, uh, there are test case failures? Yeah, because of the linking issue, sometimes it might happen. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, in other back end cases, uh, we have the test cases that spreads out. Uh, so, uh, uh, like test case failures related to linting, uh, we definitely have to fix the issues, right? Like for example, space issue or whatever, like type or any such things. Now, like if there is actual failure in like functional JavaScript test or simple functional test, right? Uh, then there is something like our code has caused the regression, right? Yes. So what we need to do is like we need to run it local. We can run that particular test case on local. Uh, there is a blog post series from Matt actually, uh, Matt Plamen, uh, which, which kind of shows you like how we can run the test cases on local. Yes. So you can run it on local and see like uh, if our code is causing any regression yes. and try to fix the regression so that you know you can uh, upload it back. And in, in that time someone came and upload the patches, in that case do we get the edit of that particular issue? But we already do the patches, right? And you do the test cases where you are not getting what the package is. Uh, yeah, I mean that's the so like, you are asking like you are saying a multiple then, right? Yeah, you I go and add, add the badge and someone is coming and you rebatch it again. Correct. That yeah. kind of issue we are facing a lot of yeah, I mean that's the I mean I would say <laughs> we can certainly <laughs> explore those kind of ways. But yes. Multiple then I am doing the same thing. Like so, you have done the things, uh, get like the uh, all sort of test case failures. But the thing is that like uh, as long as you upload a valid page, uh, committer will still give you credit. Like, for example, if like someone, so let me give you one example. Like I'm fixing something, right? Uh, I wrote a page, huh. and it came up with like hundreds of failures. It means like I have done something, right? Still is uh, It means like I have done something wrong, and uh, someone comes in and they kind of fix my code, uh, fix yes. the issue failure. So, I mean, committers are like generic enough to give the credits to both because I even tried to fix something. Right? Yes. Uh, it's not something like I came here, I wrote some random code, and uh, we know what happened. Lots of uh, exactly that's what I'm saying, right? Thousands or something. Exactly. You know what? Usually, we have hundreds of comments, so yes. it, it might not be easy for even committer to you know check each. Exactly. exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's why, I mean, like, if we do the kind of, you know, doing all sort of phones, uh, upload page, and all sort of incorrect, for example, if you upload a page, there are linking issues, right? We'll have to upload it again. So, I mean, unfortunately, we can't hide certain comments on the photo. So, we will have, like, no yes. list of pages. Again, again, we are doing something what happened, we are just uh, uploading the page. Yeah. Or Correct. So make sure that like at least we run all sort of code quality check. Uh, some sort of if we have some test case, uh, this is like written earlier. We can execute it and be sure that you know uh, it's not causing any regression or any such thing. Anyone else? Thank you. I'll upload those slides and uh, put a link on uh, Twitter. So.